it's uh, John Rob here with uh, Lindy Fay Heller uh, from Wardruna, the fantastic Wardruna, a band that uh, musically deals a lot of sensuality and nature. And interestingly enough, this is something by extension of that, or maybe something that was a precursor to it. Uh, Lindy is fascinated by the power of scent and the power of perfume. So, so when did this kind of obsession start for you, Lindy? Uh, it started for real, I think, when I was working in a perfumery in the 90s here in uh, Bergen. And uh, I had to, it was not a, a usual perfumery, perfumery because the lady that uh, owned it, she was from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, I think that maybe it was the reason we had some different stuff in that perfumery. She got, uh, she was, to be frank, more international uh, than uh, Belgian used to be back in those days. So she had some really, really nice uh, perfumes, challenging for the nose, something. And I, I could go there in the mornings before people uh, came into the shop and just go and check out all the scents. And I did, and I uh, did that every morning. And I just started to kind of uh, think, hmm, who can, what does it, does it remind me about and who can it suit? What kind of people would like this and that? And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just continued from there, really. And uh, I did something. I remember that uh, I asked people if I could sniff their skin. But so I, I didn't notice that maybe that was a bit uh, out of line. But now I'm thinking, yeah, it was just the interest uh, developing. And people say, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Well, people say that uh, scent and the sense of smell is the most powerful of the uh, the five senses. And we, um, would, is that something you think? I mean, people initially would think sight would be, you know, seeing something remind you strongly something happened 20, 30 years ago. But apparently it's scent. And if you smell something, it will take you exactly back to that place that it reminds you of. Oh, yeah. I've experienced that myself. And maybe you too. You know, people are just aware of it. I mean, I could recognize a perfume. I, I, I smelled something. I just, I'm sitting right next to my perfume. Can I just want to show you something, if that's okay? Because yes, it's yes. about what you, what you just told me. And I had to have this one, Miki Santral. She was inspired by um, uh, her nanny. That was a voodoo, kind of a voodoo um uh, I don't into the voodoo culture, but she was also she was very fond of her nanny, and she did this perfume. She's an art uh, artist, and she did it to uh, of the you know what she remembers from the herbs and flowers that she used and nanny used. But the thing is that my aunt, I could smell that. I, I bought a tester of it online, and I could I was taken right back probably twenty years. My aunt used that in the eighties. So what's in a perfume like that? I mean, this is what I want to talk about, actually, because initially, I imagine like most people, you think uh, sort of human perfumes, they do ostensibly seem to be a very narrow range of smells, but there's a very, these days there's a much wider range. And, yeah. and is this something you found out in your journey that perfume itself is much more exploratory, much more interesting than it would have been 20 years oh. ago? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's... Um... I made a hobby out of, I discovered lately when I was, um, I quit the perfumery to to do music and stuff more. And uh, and then um, I figured out that after a long period of sickness, actually, that I could order small samples from uh, the States or something. They had this, uh, um, what is it, shops that specialized in, in uh, samples. And that was more artisan, Things, you know, artists that are doing scents nowadays, but also old, uh, you know, vintage perfumes. But everything was gathering, gathered under the same roof. So, so I could just pick and choose and, and try. And it's tons of things out there that are not, you will never find a tea row, for example. <laughs> never, ever. <laughs> and uh, it's such a joy. I, I Every time... Uh, I have the chance, I tell people that, you know, just try something out of uh, the box from the ordinary perfume because they only have a certain collection that go, that is, it's almost like listening to, to, to the radio, the same kind of music 
What kind of um, smells would you draw to? What kind of ingredients? It differs. Uh, so, for example, uh, back then in the 90s, I was into very um, woody scents. And because I'm just showing you things. This one here, from it was from Shiseido. They don't make it anymore. But it was uh, um, a guy called Sergio Boutans, a real artist, that he just got the um, ability to do something very special here. And he made, uh, apparently, the first real good descent that was aimed for women. Uh, but of course, it's unisex anyway, no one cares. But this really, really heavy hitter on the woods, cedar tree. Uh, super lovely. So that was back in those days. It was a lot of uh, spices and everything that was popular in the nineties. Anyway, it was a little. I think in the nineties it was a little bit more edgy in this normal perfumery resource than it is now. Well, that's yeah, interesting because I, I I thought it had become more diverse and more edgy. So is that is that the mainstream is more edgy, but now there's more yeah. underground perfumes, or is yeah, it just a general yeah? The more underground perfumes is going everywhere. That's really nice. So that's not mm. stopping. That seems like it's very, uh, yeah, you know, artists are work, uh, working freely. But it seems like in the in uh, the general thing, it's like about smelling like shampoo, really. It's not <laughs> that interesting. With, of course, some, uh, there are some exciting stuff. But for most parts, I think it's a bit too much on the shampoo thing. Hmm. And um, and this was also from the 90s, Bulgari, but that you can find still, but in another formulation, I think. So this is one, so it's it's a bit milder now, but this is from the 90s and it's it smells almost like um, rubber, like a tire hmm. from, the, from, from cars with, uh, I don't know what, the, 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 the name Black Fits is really, really good. Yeah. yeah, great name. I mean, yeah. is there a is there a trend towards more savoury, darker kind of smells? I mean, uh, you know, like old woods, uh, the smell of uh, notes, you know, uh, money, you know, like um, like well, like dollar bills, you know, that those kind of smells. Would they be or tobacco or old tobacco, slightly rotten tobacco? Is that really bizarre kind of ingredients? Is is, is there a trend towards that and to make it into perfumes? I hope so. Uh, I, I do have one uh, very in my collection also. Funny that you mentioned tobacco, because this is from Parfum de Empire, Paris is Tabac Taboo. Mm. This is like wet tobacco. It's really heavy hitter tobacco. I think it's also with, uh, you know, the, uh, I don't know if it's called Easter Lily or Narcissus or something, but those two with tobacco combined, it's very like animalic. Uh, Mm. So I hope it's coming. I think it may be. It's those things often go around anyway, don't they? So yeah. Do you think yeah. uh, the per the purpose of a perfume has changed? You know, mate. Um, at one time, it just seemed to be like a sweet smell, but now because there's so many diverse smells, are they to are they to actually match the mood you're in, or to create a different mood, a different sort of more exotic mood? I think the artists they are they are probably working in this. Uh, Based of getting some mood, uh, their own mood. They have their own moods. Maybe what they are thinking about. It's a lot of ideas out there, I think, and that's coming through in this mm. speciality. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just more the idea of you know, would you use a perfume to change the way you personally feel, or to create a, a, a different kind of reaction? I do that um, all the time, every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for example, now it's springtime, almost but not yet. So then I emphasize, uh, it's, it happens every year. Springtime is my favorite time of the year. So then I start taking out this kind of spring flowers uh, thing. So this is Ustara from Penalagons. And the thing is that it's uh, discontinued. And I think that is because it's, yeah, again, a bit edgy, luckily, but it's with the nar narcissus and it's very, it's very kind of dirty in a way because now if you smell them, it's a bit dirty. You know? They smell a bit. Um, <laughs> how can I say it? It's not a polite way to say it. 
cat pee a bit like a cat pee oh oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love it though it's like nature uh, in my living room so uh then i spray spray myself with this before the um, those flowers are coming up um, so do you do you find um the, the, the more savory uh smells like that you find mm-hmm. them more more interesting yeah yes uh and also i have uh from south Vitans, i have this uh voice de violetta Bois de violetta i don't speak french so i probably pronounce <laughs> it wrong but that's with wood but it's with violets then so don't it reminds me about a uh, fairy forest or something <laughs> so it, yeah yeah so it makes me daydream about places that i haven't been yet i mean by extension you know, yeah. do you if do you like to go into nature and smell the forest or smell, you know, the first days of spring when the plants are coming up and you could smell I mean oh. is, is your yeah, is, is your sense of smell that, that finely tuned that you find that very powerful? Oh yes. Yeah, I I, I do go a lot uh, of walks. I, I live now out of the city, a bit out of the city, so uh, I'm closer to nature and uh, again and it's for me, it's um, important, and I do, I do smell things when I go out. I smell everything, and there are certain memories also of places I've been where it, there are maybe certain plants or bushes. Like you have this. Um, oh no! Of course, I can't uh, remember the name of the, the one that you have in gin. Juniper. Yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a smell I have uh, very. I'm very fond of in nature. Do, do you think in, in a way that perfume is a concentrated essence of nature or is it something completely different for you? I think it's very, uh, sometimes very skilled people who can take extracts from nature but make sometimes something new of it into something. That's I think that is very exciting. And uh, sometimes... It can be like if it's a solid floor, if it's only one specific, like I have, for example, a rose perfume, which is um, of Femmes de Nicolai, which is a really, really nice uh, rose and that I use when I want to relax and sleep and stuff. So, mm. yeah, so it's, it's like, so it's, it's present. To, it's not just a perfume. It's not just nature. There's actually different roles or somewhere in between. Yes, somewhere in between, I think. Mm. So I differ from, personally, I differ from when I want to travel in my head, you know, with, uh, with Dan, uh, Dan is someone that has done something with the ingredients <laughs> for nature. And uh, that differs from when someone has made something to be completely like, for example, a rose or a violet in pure form or something. Mm. But I do, have, I do have a very interesting perfume also that is, it's 100% synthetic. And I like that. That is uh, like punk. I feel in in perfume perfume world, which is this, I am, mm-hmm. which is it means nothing or something. Because it was after this. Uh, have you heard about this uh, uh, IFRA or something? It's like an organization that has made it forbidden to use a lot of natural ingredients in okay. in commercial perfumes. So this guy here made a perfume. Uh, because he was so pissed that he couldn't use what he wanted to use. Apparently, that's how the story goes. I don't know, but he then made a kind of leathery perfume out of totally synthetics, just to make a point out of. So, so why did why did they ban the the natural? Uh, no, yeah, it's just because uh, the silly thing that they have to protect. Uh, and I say silly because I'm a very allergic person myself. But I can then stay clear of what I'm allergic to. You can't start to forbid nature. I think mm. so it is. Uh, it is just because pe- people might can be maybe can be allergic to this and that. And oh, I don't. Okay. Yes, but you know, if you start to forbid using uh, lemon and things or using pure flowers and things, it's it's a bit. Uh, yeah, I'm not agreeing. Have you ever made your own perfumes? 
No, I haven't. But I'm uh, I'm uh, now working very closely with um, uh, we got in France also. She's a, a herbalist, um, Joanna from uh, Cult Botanic. So we are working now on making. Um, uh, actually, we have been talking a lot to see where the conversation takes us scent-wise because I'm open to anything. And then I saw she came with something very nice that, and by the way, I made some incense today, but it, it doesn't, they are not like, um, formed, they look a little, little bit scruffy because I just formed it by hand. I said, but that is super lovely. It's <laughs> rustic and it's like, let's make, we have to make incense like this Nordic, uh, because I have never seen Maybe it exists, but I haven't really seen Nordic kind of uh, scent. No, um, incense. Mm. So we are exploring that these days. So that's what I'm so it's that, So how does that work? Do you sort of say uh, a ballpark idea of what you're trying to achieve and she works out the ingredients to get to that point? Yeah, no, yeah we are um, uh, working more, more closely than that, I would say say because that for me would feel a bit yeah i'm here you are there like so mm. she's sending things to me of what she has made before and i i kind of see where that takes me and we have some just because she's from or originally from sweden she's living in london now and i don't know we have some kind of similarities with the scent and where it takes like uh, memories scent memories and stuff uh so i'm getting things said and i also will meet up with her at one point so we can try to make things a bit uh, together like sitting there and make things together really mm. Mm. but so, of so course she's the one that knows how to do it so she is uh, yeah 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 because yeah. it's, it's, it's a skill isn't it i mean it's, uh... it's a skill which i don't have so but she is really good at it so yeah, but I, I do smell things, and I have mm. still, yeah. So, so does she use natural ingredients? Which side of the uh, the debate she, is she on? Yeah, no, but she she uses um, um, natural ingredients, and mm -hmm. she goes picking stuff herself out in nature. Because mm. so, you yeah. you made um, you've done a candle, haven't you? Yeah, the thing is that um, I was drawn in in the last minute. I didn't know about the candle originally. To be honest and mm. but then i was sent it oh it's a candle and i start to sniff it and i got the question yeah what do you think about this? can you say something about it or do we need some tweaking and, and it reminded me a lot about the uh, the forest where i'm from it's close to the sea and you know it the candle also had this uh, fusion between the ocean and uh, the woods mm. somehow uh, so I just said that, which it reminded me of, but like I, that's how I, when I smell things, it always gets some stories in my head anyway. So I just mm. wrote that down and um, with, from, came with a, just suggestions of a couple of tweakings, how to get it even more like that than it that. Mm. Well, the, the, the tweaks are the key part, aren't they? Yeah, I, yeah. Can be. yeah, I think that's <laughs> what, how maybe people are making uh, perfumes, th those who are making it. They're mm. tweaking all the time, I guess. So yeah. would it be fair to, well, it's fair to say with, with the band, Wardroon, that you sing in, the music is really powerful and sensual, and you listen to it, and you can imagine the forest from the sound of the music. Would you say perfumes and smells affect you in the same way? And is there a crossover between music and perfumes? Oh yeah, it's uh, it gives me inspiration to uh, to get in certain uh, moods. If I'm uh, let's say let's say for example, if I'm tired one day, which happens uh, often, I'm just used to it now, but it happens often. Uh, then and I have to tune into something, then I can just go to my perfume um, closet and, and see if it's something that can help me getting into that mood. Because for me, this the the sense of smelling things can really get me into help me getting into mm -hmm. mm. Uh, concentration or whatever get into something else do you have favorite smells are the thing 
you know, would you be able to have like your five favorite smells or does it change and fluctuate all the time? It changes, but I have something that uh, actually is with me often. And that is actually, I'm a little bit uh, fond of violets. And I've been wondering why. And I think it's one of my aunts, she used to have, uh, <laughs> I think it was her, that she had some violet uh, soap <laughs> or something. You know, so I'm very fond of my aunts. And I think <laughs> that may be... But I find it also mysterious in a way. Mm. And this aunt, my aunt, a couple of my aunts are re- really, really mysterious anyway. So, so it's probably <laughs> in a good way. And they've been traveling all over the world in ships and stuff. So, so they have uh, all these stories from far east. And mm. uh, so that really, uh, yeah, violets, woods. Which woods. kind of woods? Any any specific woods like sandalwood or? Or even just wood from a uh, an oak tree. I mean, it's, it yeah, be more like an oak tree, like a uh, forest. You know, I like this blend. You know, with the um, Tarns scent, which I'm very fond of. Usually, he use uh, use a lot of cedar. No, it it differs. I, I used to hate white flowers on myself. I used to hate it, but mm. now I love it. So, for what? example, lilies and stuff. Yes, that's. It's like a diva thing going on. <laughs> so how so how does that change? Is it just because you 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 like? Is it is it like a, a an intro smell? You get to that and then you go to the next one, the next one, or yeah, you know, I think it's me that during the years I've been sniffing and sniffing and sniffing about probably thousands of things, and you know, uh, I was very easy. It was very easy for me to like violets and woods. That's uh, that is started there, I think. And but the thing with the white flowers, for example, is that you probably know that they sometimes have this almost like animalic aspect with them. And that took me some time to get used to. But when you get used to it, then you crave it. <laughs> I'm from an island where you where, where where chickens were running loose. Where, where, a neighbor's house, you know. So I know mm. when I have this animalic senses, it reminds me about chicken, so whatever. And but nowadays I love it, you know, mm. to have the mix because it's not that I use animal parts in the perfumes anyway. It's just the flowers themselves. Mm. So is it almost like unraveling the subtleties in the smell? Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, I, love, I have, for example, the, um, this is also from Sanskrit Tons. So, uh, really, you should, I'm not uh, sponsored in any way. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, Tuberos Criminal, and he has amped up, he, he told his perfumer to amp up the, um, uh, this. Of it's, it's, it smells like gasoline in the beginning, mm. honestly. Pure gasoline, and then, it's, uh, then it comes, uh, this flower is lovely. I love it. So, so really, a, a, a smell is not. It's the initial reaction to a smell is like the base reaction, but there's actually thousands of subtleties and other smells inside that smell. Oh yeah, yeah, and it develops. And what I've heard also that I think it's correct is that, yeah, like fifty years ago or forty, they knew people knew that if you took a perfume on, it would take like twenty minutes before you, you know, just had to wait. For 20 minutes but now people nowadays most people are not uh you know they can't wait mm. no, let's um smell nice like uh <laughs> right away and uh then uh then it has to the scent is like this shampooish uh, stuff which i'm not that fond of to be honest so so really the smell of a, of a perfect perfume is a mixture of the smell of that person plus the perfume mixing together and creating all these subtleties and, and underlying sort yeah. of smells. I think so, yeah. You see, because I think also when you train up your nose for many, many years, it will happen to everybody. Then you get in contact again, but you can actually smell a human being when <laughs> coming into the room. And... Uh, and then it is um, then it is interesting to see what people if they put on some perfumes how it mingles, you know. Mm. Yeah. 
so it's it's never a static thing it's always it's always moving yeah yeah 